Hi, I'm Barry. This is Mega City Gaming, and this is Recyc, an ultralight version of the Judge Dread or Strontium Dog miniatures games, using the cards and the dice and the tokens from either of those two games. Let's do it. Actions and activations. Take an activation chip for every unit in the team and place them into an opaque bag. Each team must use a different colour of tokens. Blindly pull an activation chip from the bag to see which side can activate a model. Each unit gets two single actions or one double action. So if you're like me and rules speak just go straight over your head, then here's an example. So here's a gang of Jews and here's a judge, uh, roughly the same point cost uh, and for each of the Juve models, there we go, we generate a token, an activation token or chip. And the judge, there's only one model, so one token. Easy, yeah? Different colour tokens for each team, so red team, blue team. And you might want to use the same colour tokens uh, for that team always. Um, you know, wound tokens and so on. Um, and these tokens have to be the same size and shape so you can pull them from the bag or from the cup without knowing which one you're pulling by feel. So let's put them all into a bag, shake the bag at the beginning of the next turn. You pull out a token and oh, it's the red team. It's the Juves. And then you choose one that hasn't activated and that model can take one single action or Oh, sorry, one double action or two single actions. Star activations. For every unit with a cool of four or more, replace an activation chip with a star chip. This can be used by any unactivated unit. After use, the unit must make a successful cool test to put it back into the bag. The cool test suffers minus one die for each time a star chip was returned to the bag during the turn. So here's some stat cards, uh, one of which I created myself. This is for the Strontium Dog game, but uh, anyway. So I've got four Jews and uh, Street Judge. Street Judge cool is four, and this model, she's the leader, her cool is five. So that means she generates a star activation token. So we can switch out one of these tokens for a star activation token. Same size and shape. Uh, it's just got a star on it. If you're using different tokens, you can just put a different color token in or whatever, long, as long as you can't tell which one it is by touch. The judge also generates a star activation token. So there we go, star. Okay, right. So let's imagine the judge pulled, pulled the star activation, activation token, uh, took a double action or, or two single actions, two single actions, shoot, shoot, Pew pew. Then he wants, he, he's got a chance to put that back in the bag. So he rolls four dice. Okay. One, two, three, four. That's a failure. It doesn't go back in the bag because he didn't roll the 2000 AD symbol or a six on a D6. One in chance, one in six chance. Okay. So let's imagine he did roll that. That goes back in the bag. He passed the test and la la la. He pulls out another token. Oh, it's the judge again. He takes another action, another double action, or another two single actions. So shoot, shoot, pew, pew, pew. Then he gets a chance to put that back in the bag. However, because it's already been put in the bag once, it's minus one on the test. So he only rolls three dice. So he rolls three dice. Success, success goes back in the bag. Yeah, 2000 AD symbol or a six on a D6 goes back in the bag. Pulls it out again, boom. This time he's only rolling two dice. Failure, it stays there, doesn't go back in the bag. Okay, right, let's imagine this gang, uh, let's say he's already been, these two haven't already taken an action and we pull out the star activation token. This can be used by anyone who hasn't activated yet, including 
the leader, including the one that generated the token. So let's imagine uh, her call is five, so she's going to she's going to activate with that. She's going to shoot twice, pew pew, and then at the end of her actions, when she's finished her actions, she rolls five dice because her call is five. Okay. Okay, that's a failure. Uh, so that doesn't go back in the bag. Let's imagine it did go back in the bag. She passed. Let's put that back in the bag. Boop. And then shake the bag up. Pull a token out at random. Oh, it's a star activation token. So this can be used by any of those unactivated people. Let's try uh, using her. So she takes her actions to shoot pew pew. Uh, her call is three, but because the activation token has already been replaced into the bag, that's minus one. So we roll only two dice. So much less chance of this going back in the bag. So sometimes it can be worth using this star activation token on units that have a high cool value. So let's see if it goes back in the bag. Yes, it does. Okay, lucky. Right. A cool test involves rolling the number of dice equal to the cool stat. For example, if the unit has a cool of four, roll four dice. And if any of the results are a special result, the, the uh, test is successful. Tests. Roll the number of dice equal to the stat being tested. If any dice show a special result, the test is successful. Single actions. Move. A unit's move value shows the maximum distance it can move. Measure the distance or count the hexes or squares. Moving over small terrain pieces uses two move points. Wide areas of terrain halve the movement distance. Terrain that is taller than the model needs a ladder to climb up. Jump. Jump up to your move distance to a location at the same elevation or lower. Use a leap, double action to reach higher elevations. Snapshot. Roll the number of dice equal to the attacking unit's shoot. If the total number of hits is equal or more than the target's current cool, the target is pinned. The defender rolls the number of dice equals to its resist. For each armor result rolled, Remove a hit result from the attack. Any remaining hits cause injuries up to the weapon's power value. The target gains injured tokens. For each injured token, the target suffers minus one cool. When cool reaches zero, the target is rendered unconscious. Weapon range modifiers add or remove dice from the attack dice pool. Okay, let's try a snapshot. We've got Sylvia Slack Lackinson shooting a judge. Her shoot skill is four, so she takes four dice. Then we look at the weapon. Short range eight, that's the distance. So if it's up to eight inches or eight centimeters or whatever, eight squares, then you add plus two dice, yeah? Here it says long range 24 minus one. So if it's over 24 inches, then minus one dice. But anyway, she's rolling six dice. Then we look at the defender's uh, resist. His resist is three. He's rolling three dice to, to defend. Okay, different colored dice uh, just for convenience. You can roll them separately if you like. He's got only one color of dice. Uh, in the attack roll, we're looking for hits. We can ignore the other results. Four hits versus oh, the judge rolls absolutely no defense. That's terrible. Okay, so four hits. Uh, right, then we look at uh, the judge's current cool. His cool is four. So four hits equals four. If, uh, if the number of hits equals uh, the judge's, or the, the uh, defender's current cool value, the defender is pinned and receives a pinned token, which means they have to spend a single action to recover when it's their turn. Um, okay, so equal or more. So if they if she'd rolled uh, 
five, then yeah, he would have been pinned as well. So he gets pinned, regardless of what the defense role is. Yeah. Uh, then, for example, if he had rolled any defense, any shield values, then we remove those from the attack roll. Yeah. Um, but he didn't. He rolled really badly. So he takes four wounds. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And his current cool is his cool value minus the number of wounds. So his cool is four minus the number of wounds, which is four. He is unconscious, just like that. Quick, fast, deadly, and very fun. Okay, just a note about the power of a weapon. So she rolled four hits and he rolled no defense. Um, in this case, the power of the weapon is four. So she can't do any more damage than four. So for example, if, she'd rolled, if she had rolled five hits and he rolled no defense, then she couldn't do five damage, she could only do four damage. So the power of the weapon comes into play like that. Cover. If the target is within range one of any intervening terrain, the unit can add evade dice to the defense roll, but is pinned. A unit can have no more than one pinned token at a time, but the benefit of the intervening terrain is ongoing. If a unit is pinned by a ranged attack and there is intervening terrain within one, it gains the benefit of cover and adds its evade to the defense roll. Let's try the snapshot one more time. This time we're going to use a bit of cover. So the judge is behind this pipe. He's within range one, so one inch or one centimeter, whatever you're using, of the pipe. And it's intervening, which so it's between her, the attacker, and him, the defender. Yeah. Right. So uh, she's still going to roll her six dice to attack. He's rolling his three dice to defend. However, he's choosing to add his evade. So he's going to basically dive behind this to add his evade, which is two. So he's adding two, but he's voluntarily taking a pinned token. So he's rolling. So cover is, is pretty useful. He's rolling five dice and she's rolling six dice. Let's see how this goes. I don't know whose side you're on, but I'm rooting for the judge this time. Wow, she rolled quite well again. So she rolled again, she rolled four hits. And he rolled this time two defense. Okay, we can ignore all of the other results. Okay, so uh, again, in this situation, he would get pinned because his cool is four, but he's already pinned, he can't take another pinned token. So no worries there. Right, next, uh, we take these away. And this time he only takes two wounds. So he was saved by diving into cover. Pinned. The model cannot perform actions except shake it off. Only one pinned token can be placed on a unit. Fight. If the target is within range, use the snapshot rules, but attack with the fight stat instead. Cover doesn't apply. Okay, this time the judge is going to whack Sylvia Slack Lackinson into submission with his day stick. His day stick has a plus one modifier. So this time we're using his fight. So his fight is three plus one for the modifier, that's four. She's rolling her defense dice of three. Uh, so it's four versus three. Cover doesn't apply, not that there is any. Okay, and it's a straight roll. So no defense, 
no uh, no shields, no armor rolls. Um, three hits and no defense. So the number of hits uh, doesn't it isn't equal or more than her cool, so she doesn't get uh, doesn't get pinned. So she just takes a straight three wounds. One, two, three. Multiple opponents. If any other friendly models are in melee range, gain plus one fight. This is negated if the target also has backup. Shake it off. Remove a pinned token. Throw. Items with the throw rule can be thrown using the snapshot rules. Maximum range is determined by the unit's current fight plus cool stats. It's up to a maximum of nine. Remember, the unit's current cool stat suffers minus one for each injured token. This time, Sylvia Slack Lackinson is going to throw something she picked up, uh, like a grenade or something like that, at the judge uh, in order to push him back or stun him or something like that. Anyway, so she uh, looks at her fight stat, which is two, and then she adds her current cool. Her cool is normally five, but she's got three wound tokens, so it's down to two. So two plus two is four. That's how far she can throw it. She's injured, you know, she can't, she's not at her best. So let's say we're using inches. So the range, the maximum range she could throw that would be four, which is there, and that's out of range, so she can't do that. Double actions. Sprint. Move twice in a row. Place a moving fast token by the unit until the end of the turn. Ranged attacks against this unit suffer minus one shoot. Charge. Move, then fight to gain plus one fight. The target may react first if it doesn't have an activation chip or pinned token by it. Run reaction. The target can move as a free action. Shoot reaction. The target can snapshot as a free action. If the snapshot cause is pinned, the charge attack is immediately stopped. Place an activation chip by the model that reacted. Sylvia is going to charge the judge. She's had enough. She's been wounded. It's her last chance of freedom. So she's going to do that. Her move is six. So let's use inches today. The defunct system of measurement. Uh, and yeah, definitely within six inches. So she's going to move up to the judge. And so, yeah, up to the judge. And she's going to use her fight stat, which is two. And she gets a plus one because she's got momentum. She's running directly at him like that. Okay. Uh, he has a choice now. He hasn't already activated. There's no activation token by him. So he has a choice. He can either just move out the way, uh, just move his move distance, which is also six. He can move six inches in any direction or uh, which is more likely he's going to shoot. So before she gets a chance to attack with her attack dice, he's going to shoot. So let's let's do that. Uh, snapshot. So his uh, his shoot is four, and let's see the modifiers for a law giver mark two plus one. So five. He's rolling five dice. Uh, is it armor piercing? Let me just check. Armor piercing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in this version of the game, armor piercing just uh, removes one of her act, uh, one of her defense. So she's rolling two dice. So normally three, but zoop, because of armor piercing, only two. There we go. Okay, let's do that. Okay, lots of hits, lots of hits, lots of hits. Um, 
and only one defense. So the number of hits is equal or more to her current cool. Her current cool because she's been wounded is only two. So she gets immediately pinned, yeah? So she goes back to where she was and gets pinned. Zip, she gets pinned. And that charge never happens, unfortunately. And as for wounds, uh, there we go. She takes three wounds, one, two, three. And you know what? She's out for the count anyway. Yeah, too bad. I was growing quite fond of her. Aimed fire. Gain plus one shoot to the snapshot action. Overwatch. Make a snapshot action against any model that moves into line of sight and range. At the end of the turn, the unit can stay in Overwatch and not return the activation chip to the bag. If injured, stunned or pinned, remove the Overwatch token. Hunker down. Move a distance up to the unit's current cool to get into cover. If in cover, roll the number of dice equal to the unit's current cool. Remove one injured for every armor result and remove all stunned tokens. Okay, let's, uh, let's hunker down. Let's imagine the judge has been injured. His current cool is two. So he can spend a double action to hunker down, which means he moves the distance up to his current cool, which is two. So let's say we're using inches, so he can move two inches into cover. Zzz, yeah, and remember cover is intervening terrain uh, within one inch, so yeah. And then he rolls his uh, current cool. So his current cool is two, he rolls two dice, two dice and he's looking for the armor symbols. So let's try that. Let's imagine if you, if you remember the Dread film, 2012 Dread film, um, he's been shot, he's in cover, and he's applying, he's stitching up, stapling his wound and applying uh, the biomimetic gel or whatever it is. Right, here we go. <clears throat> okay, no, that was a massive failure. Let's try. Uh, okay, let's imagine we rolled two defense, <laughs> two shield dice. Uh, we can remove those two. Yeah, let's imagine. Let's pretend that was a success. Uh, and he's back to full health. Well done. Amazing. But that was his action. Open door. Interact. Opening and closing doors or manipulating objects is a double action. Picking up, putting down, or passing objects to other units is also a double action. Some objects may be dropped with a single action depending on the specific mission details and the nature of the object.